Everybody, please welcome back writer, director, Ashgar Farhadi. Thank you. Welcome, and we have Farzad, who's going to help us interpret here with uh, Ashgar. Ashgar, what an amazing piece of filmmaking. Um, I've been a big fan, I've told you, big fan of your films, and, and your previous films that were said in Iran were in, in Tehran, but this film takes place in Shiraz. Um, can you tell us why you decided to set this film in, in Shiraz? There are many different reasons for it. But one of the main reasons was that Shiraz is a very old and historical city, and as Iranian, we have a lot of nostalgic feelings about that city. از قهرمان های ملی و کسایی که ما بهشون افتخار میکنیم در تاریخ ایرانیمون توی اون شهر یه نشانه هایی ازشون هست. Many of the national heroes and the people that we are really proud of are there are signs of them in that city. اون اون ایران ایران اصلی اون مرکزشون شهره. The real Iran, the center of the real Iran is in that city. که من فکر کنم که اون این کانسپت در واقع کانسپت فیلم با این چیزی که الان گفتم یه لینکی داره. And I thought the concept of the film has a link with this idea. Um, I adore watching the opening sequence of your film. We watch the hero um, um, walking up the hill and the scaffolding, and then we're watching the sending, which becomes such a powerful allegory, especially after we've seen the film and where it goes. You know, can you tell us about that opening sequence? اون صحنه ای که میره بالا با خیلی در زمان طولانی میره بالا و بلا فاصله تا رسید بالا میاد پایین یه جوری انگار خلاصه کل داستان فیلمه. The scene that he ascends up, goes up in the stairs, for a long time and then suddenly comes back down right away. It's kind of like this small, short, you know, summary of the film. The story of people who do a good deed in their life and they go up with that good deed and they come down right away with life. چیزی که برام جالب بود توی راجبه این آدمو که تحقیق می‌کردم اینه که اینا در یه لحظه از زندگیشون یه کار خوبی میکنن و خیلی مشهور میشن و خیلی شناخته شده میشن و مردم انتظار دارن که از اون به بعد هم همیشه اونها آدم‌های قهرمانی باشن و بدون خطا Something that was very interesting to me was that these people do something very good a good deed and then right after that people expect them to be that person for the rest of their lives without any mistakes. Tragedy of this is that when these people get to a point where they get to the leader, the community doesn't give up for any mistakes. The tragic point of this is that when they go up there and they become like a big person, a hero, the society doesn't let them to make any mistakes anymore. And life without a mistake is like a hell. And life without making mistakes is like hell. And, and, and that's what I love. Everything that you said, and, and that's one of the things I was blown away by that opening sequence, because it's almost like a thesis for your film. It's in that opening moment of the film. Did you always, when you were writing and thinking about the film, you always conceived that opening moment? تو خیلی از فیلم هم سعی کردم که در شروع و اون سکانس اول یه نشانه بدم که تماشاگر از چه زاویه‌ای فیلم رو ببینه. In many of my films, I really tried in the one of the very open, like open scenes or one of the beginning scenes, I give them a sign to the audience to 
guide them to the film like how they should watch this film مثلا توی فیلم جدایی یه صحنه‌ای که یه زن و شوهری جلوی دوربین نشستن دوربین جای قاضی نشسته و برام اون در واقع دعوت تماشاگر به این بود که جای قاضی بشینه و خودش قضاوت کنه راجع به این دو تا like for example in a separation uh, there are a couple sitting in front of the judge and the camera is in, in this place of the judge and that was kind of an invitation for the audience that you be the judge and watch this story unfold توی فیلم گذشته یه زن و مردی بودن یکی ایرانی بود یکی فرانسوی و توی فرودگاه هم دیگه رو می‌دیدن دو طرف شیشه‌ای بودن که با هم حرف می‌زدن و صدای هم دیگه رو نمی‌شنیدن مثل این بود که انگار این دو نفر در کل فیلم هم دیگه رو نمی‌تونن بفهمن For example, in the past, the first scene is the couple, one of them is Iranian, and they're at the airport, and there is a, a glass in front of them that they talked through the glass, but they can't hear each other. It was like an allegory for these people doesn't understand each other throughout the film. Um, I, the, the reason why I keep bringing up the opening sequence and how powerful visually it is is because, you know, your film is deceptively very simple, and script driven but the directing is and the visuals are so powerful i want to bring up the the scene where baran and rahim have the big fight and they're in the market and you have you, you have all these mirrors and compartments and glasses and reflections and it's so powerfully symbolically about the relationship and everything that is happening can you talk about staging that sequence سخت‌تر این کار توی کارگردانی این نوع فیلم اینه که قراره که کاملا به نظر شبیه یه فیلم مستند گونه بیاد the hardest thing about directing this kind of films is that they have to look like it's a documentary هیچ جفت تماشاگر نباید احساس کنه که چقدر کارگردانی خوبی داشت این صحنه به نظر باید بیاد که اصلا کارگردانی وجود نداشته و این یه چیزیه که وجود داره و ما می‌بینیم کسی نساخته اینو At no moment in the film, the audience should think, oh, what a great directing. They have to always think, oh, as if there is no director, there is no one present, and this is just happening, and we were watching it. I try to say that with all the material of the day, like the shishas, like the panjars, the things that are in my mind, I try to use them as well. I always try with uh, the mat everyday material, like glasses, windows, and the stuff that we talked about, do what I want to do with the film. وقتی آدم‌ها رو از پشت شیشه های مختلف می‌بینی انگار می‌بینیشون و همچنان بهشون دسترسی نداری و نمی‌بینیشون When you see people from the different like windows or glasses it feels like you see them but you are far away from them you can't touch them این مثل زندگی واقعی که ما آدم‌ها رو گاهی ساعت‌ها باشون نزدیکی این معاشرت می‌کنیم حرف می‌زنیم و در انتهای احساس می‌کنیم که پیش از اینکه ببینیمشون انگار بیشتر می‌شناختیمشون هرچی بیشتر باشون حرف زدیم کمتر می‌شناسیم This is like real life that you sometimes spend time with somebody or some people for hours or for days, but as you talk to that person more and more, you feel you know them less and less. Um, Siavash, the character, lives with her uncle and aunt. Uh, Farkadeh lives with her brother. Your the, pronunciation is very good. Are you, oh my are goodness. You um, it's uh, um, amazing. The, the, <laughs> The interconnectedness between the families um, almost becomes a burden where they're all living with each other in, in, in so tightly, closely. Is that common in Iranian culture? It was. It was before. <laughs> <laughs> it was like this before. تو الان توی شهرهای بزرگ مثل پایتخت کمتر اینجوری ولی در شهرهای کوچیک هم اینجوری هست. But now in like a bigger cities like the capital Tehran it's less like this but in the small cities it's still like that. من وقتی که نوجوان بودم توی فرهنگ ما و توی کشور ما این جمله that's your problem اینو من هیچ موقع نمی‌شنیدم. When I was a child I would never hear this in like between families or friends I would never hear this sentence it's your problem. وقتی مشکل مشکلی وجود داشت مشکل مشکل همه بود. When there was a problem, it was everyone's problem. هنوزم توی شهری که من به دنیا اومدم و توی شهرهای مثل شیراز و شهرهای کوچیک اینجوریه که اگر برای یک کسی توی خانواده مشکل پیش میاد مشکل مشکل همه است و من خیلی احترام میذارم به این روحیه و یکی از 
چیزی که خیلی دوست دارم. Uh, and it's still like in the city that I'm coming from, that I born in, or, or like a small cities like Shiraz, it's still like this. When something happened to a family member, it's everybody problems, and I really, really respect that. This is something that I really enjoy. Um, in your movies, the children are witnessing. Uh, we watch them observing. Um, Nazanin. You know, Baran's daughter is the only one that is a little older and commits commits that act that creates an even more complex situation. Can you can you talk to us about that that aspect of the film that the children are are witnessing and observing? To ya hamay filmoy ke man kar karam bachha ye juri tamoshogar daavay bozorktar ha budan. In all the movies that I worked on. There is something about children that they are like spectators of the adults' fights. And this is the most sad part of these films, in my opinion. They never understand why the like adults can't get to a compensation or something. And نزدیکان خودشون برنده بشن تو این بازی and this is very heavy emotionally heavy for them and emotionally at the same time they want their people who are closer to them to win this argument این بچه‌ها شاهد یه چیزی هستن که کم کم اونا رو تربیت می‌کنه به سمت اینکه در زندگی یه کسایی هستن که باید باشون جنگید and this uh, kind of educate the children that they, there are some, some people that they have to fight for, or fight with. And this is a circle, and that, those kids become older, and they start to fight. Many of the fights that the adults have with each other, they have roots in their childhood. من توی فیلم‌ها بچه‌ها همیشه دارن نگاه می‌کنن و تماشاگرن بیشتر. In all my movies children are watching their spectators. اونا کمترین تصمیم گیری رو انجام میدن و کمترین نقش رو دارن توی دعوای بزرگترا ولی بیشترین آسیب رو می‌بینن. They have a least to say about the fight. They have least, you know, uh, say yeah in the fight, but they have the they hit the most in this fights. Um, and speaking of children, Rahim's son has that that heartbreaking speech impediment, uh, which is it, it's it, it's so instrumental to the to the script. When 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 in the process of you creating the piece, when did that idea come about that Rahim's son is unable to speak? I think at the very earliest stages of writing, I made a decision that he's going to be like this. I know that there is a person in the film who can't make a decision and can't make a decision to the other people. I thought that the main character of the film is somebody who can't make decisions and he's always looking for other people to tell him what to do. He's very passive. دلم میخواست که در انتهای فیلم ولی یه دونه تصمیم بگیره که جلوی بچهش قهرمان به نظر بیاد. And I wanted that but at the end of the film he makes a decision that that decision makes him a hero in front of his child for his child. و به خاطر همین اون بچه رو این مشکل رو براش گذاشتم که این بتونه یه تصمیمی راجع به این بچه خودش بگیره. And that's why I put this like issue for the kid having like a speech impediment so that he can make a decision based on that. It means that this story made me choose that he has this problem. Basically, Rahim is a hero to nobody in this, in this film at the end, expect his child. اون دو تا تصمیم در انتها میگیره که برای بچه‌ش تصمیم قهرمانانه ایه. He makes two decisions at the end of the film that for his son is like a heroic decisions. یکی اینکه نمیخواد فیلم بچه‌ش پخش بشه. One that he doesn't want his the video of the child get published. یکی اینکه تصمیم میگیره خودش برگرده به زندان. And the second is that he decides to go back to the prison. 
اگرچه تصمیم های تلخی هستن ولی ولی یه جور اولین باره که تو زندگی شنگار خودش تصمیم میگیره although these are very bitter choices but this is somehow the first time that he make decisions for himself I don't know about you guys but listen to this master director speaking his language is fucking amazing <laughs> it's unbelievable thank you um, gracias um, Rahim um, is such an ambiguous character, and you made the choice of him wears a smile um, throughout. Even in the most difficult scenes, he's got the smile. How did that? How did that come about? دوست داشتم که دوباره اگر اگرچه رحیم یه جایی اشتباهی کوچیکی میکنه یه دروغای کوچیکی میکنه ولی همیشه دوستش داشته باشه. I, I wanted that although Rahim makes small mistakes throughout the film but I wanted the audience to like him throughout the film. و ما مدت‌های طولانی با بازیگر کار کردیم که چگونه میشه که یه کاری بکنیم که این یه آدم دوست داشتنی بشه. And I worked with the actor for a long time to find a way to make the character some likable. من این تجربه رو در انتهای فیلم جدایی داشتم با دخترم که بازی می‌کرد. I had this experience at the end of the separation when my daughter was uh, you know acting as the daughter of the couple. اون اون در صحنه آخر که جلوی قاضی ایستاده بود و قاضی ازش می‌پرسید که دوست داری با پدرت بمونی یا با مادرت بغض می‌کرد و در حالی که گریه می‌کرد یه لبخندی هم داشت. And in the last scene when the judge asks her that if he, she wants to be with the father or the mother, although she was choking up and was about to cry, but she had a smile on her face. In this moment, the smile of the person is a little bit more than the smile of the person. This is like a very bitter moment, very dark moment. When you smile at that moment, it's, for me, I felt like it makes the darkness and bitterness of it even more. I was a child and we went to a place where we went. و پدرم خورد زمین جلوی من. I was thinking about I remember in the past when I was a child I was walking with my dad we were going somewhere and then suddenly my dad fell down. خیلی لحظه سختی بود برای من. It was a very hard time hard moment for me. نمی‌دونم چرا اینقدر ناراحت شدم اون موقع. I don't know why it made me so sad at that moment. اونم خیلی ناراحت شد. And he was very sad about it too. ولی وقتی پاشود علی رغم ناراحتیش یه لبخندی داشت. But when he got up he had this smile on his face. اون لبخنده برای من یه معنایی داشت که انگار می‌خواست که تلخی اون قضیه رو پنهان کنه. That the smile had a meaning for me as if he wanted to just hide the bitterness of the moment. این لبخندی که رحیم داره به نظرم یه جوری تلخی موقعیت که توش هست رو بیشتر می‌کنه. The smile that Rahim has in this moment I think it makes those moments even more bitter. Hmm. The character of Baram, the gentleman that loans him the money, um, could have been easily a villain. In, in any other uh, narrative. Instead, he's a very complicated character, especially when we find out the backstory of, uh, of him. Um, you know, can you tell us about uh, you know, building the character of Baram? Uh, you watch the movie very precisely. He could be a character that we actually completely hate. But in all my career, I never created a character that we hate. پس دنبال این بودم یه جوری به اون هم حق بدیم و درکش کنیم. Therefore, I was looking for a way. To give the right to him, so we understand him where he's coming from. Un harfay kamilam mantiqi va doros sidore mizane. The things that he's saying are very logical and very correct. Va ma kamilan ye joy fik konim ke agar ma ham joy un budim hami raftor mi kardim. And some at moments we think that if we were in his place, we would do the same or say the same things. Az imar Rahim ke maqabilashe un ham darkesh mi konim va fik konim ke un ham dore doros mi ge. On the other hand, when we see Rahim, we understand him as well, and we know what he's talking about. In jang bein khub va bad nis mesle tragedy ay klasik. This is not a fight between good or bad, like in classic tragedies. Tragedy modern jang bein khub va khube. The modern tragedy is between good and good. And as an audience, you don't know who you want to win, so that it makes you happy. In every 
اون طرف دیگه باخته و تو باز ناراحتی either where you are unhappy because whoever loses it makes you sad واقعا تو زندگی ما امروزه ما هم اینجوریه خیلی وقت ما نمیدونیم چه چه طرف کیو بگیریم and in our modern lives in our today lives it's the same thing we really don't know who we have to back همه حقیقت همیشه نزد یک طرف نیست all the truth is not with one side معمولا حقیقت پخش بین آدمای مختلف usually the truth is between everyone it's like in everyone's hands um, yeah i mean every character in this movie has a reason for what they're doing um, sometimes i even feel that they don't they don't know know it but they seem to have a reason for what they're they're doing بله این این جمله خیلی معروفی و جمله خیلی مهمیه this is a very famous uh, quote and it's a very important quote هر کس برای هر کاری که انجام میده دلایلی داره everybody has a reason for what they're doing ممکن دلایلش برای بقیه قابل قبول نباشه maybe other don't believe or agree with these reasons من اخیرا یه چیز جدیدتری رو وقتی به سری خوندم یه چیز به چیز جدیدتری دست پیدا کردم. I recently when I was like reading stuff I conclude I come to a new conclusion. به نظر میاد که ما یه سری دلایل داریم و بعد بر اساس اون دلایل یه کاری رو انجام میدیم. It seems that we have uh, reasons and then based on those reasons we make an action. We do an action. ولی در حقیقت برعکسه. But actually it's the other way around. ما یه کاری رو انجام میدیم و بعد میگردیم دلایلش رو تو درون اون پیدا میکنیم. We do something and then we go back and look for the reasons that we did it. ما عصبانی میشیم و یه کسی رو بهش آزاری میرسونیم در اون لحظه که عصبانی نمیدونیم چرا و بعد که دور میشیم و فکر میکنیم میفهمیم که آها ما به این دلیل عصبانی شدیم. We get furious, we get angry, we hurt someone and then when days pass we start looking at them and say oh that's the reason I was angry and I did that. این 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 تراژدی خیلی بزرگیه. This is a very big tragedy. Um, you deal straight on with social media and cancel culture. Um, you know, can you tell us about about that subject? And I was stunned that you know I'm naive, obviously, that in Iran the social media was such a big part of your of the culture and and به نظر من همه جای دنیا الان سوشال میدیا بخش مهمی از زندگی آدم هاست I think that everywhere in the world social media is a huge part of everybody's lives و خیلی بخش خوبی از زندگی آدم هاست من مخالفش نیستم And I think it's a good portion of people's lives I'm not against them ولی هنوز راه حلایی برای مشکلاتش پیدا نشده But we still haven't found uh, you know, solutions to the problems that it brings سوشال میدیا خیلی فضای سوء تفاهم برانگیزیه. سوشال میدیا is a, a realm of misunderstanding. شما یک اتفاق خیلی پیچیده رو با, با کمترین کلمات باید منتقل کنید. You have to explain a very complicated thing with a few very few words. معلومه که این ایجاد مشکل میکنه. Of course it makes me problems. شما میگین که یه نفر رفت در یه جایی و اسلحه گرفت و ده نفر رو کش اینو با 15 تا کلمه میگید you just say like somebody grabbed a gun went somewhere and killed 15 people and you just say it with 15 words این همه آدم و زندگی از بین رفته چه میشه با 15 تا کلمه این رو رسوند so many lives are lost how can you tell that in 15 words این این سوشال میدیا در واقع در ذات خودش سوء تفاهم ایجاد میکنه Uh, the social media in its nature makes misunderstandings. Um, the, your ensemble is phenomenal. The acting is superb. In complicated scenes, um, everything seems so natural. Uh, you know, is that, can you tell us a little bit about your process with the actors? Do you guys rehearse quite a lot before? من به هر از تئاتر میام توی سینما. Well, after all, I'm coming from theater to cinema. و برای اون بخش تمرین قبل از فیلم برداری خیلی بخش مهمیه. And the rehearsal before the actual production is a very important part of the job for me. معمولا برای فیلم های قبلیم دو سه ماه تمرین میکنم میکردم با بازیگرها. Usually for my last films I would rehearse with the actors two three months. اینجا هم همین کارو کردیم ولی چون کووید شروع شد و کار متوقف شد مجبور بودیم تمرین ها رو 
به جای اینکه بریم سرفین برداری تمرین کنیم و ده ماه تمرین رو طول کشید. And we want to do the same thing just rehearse with the actors for two three months but because the covid hit we had time and we we start doing a lot of rehearsal and we did a rehearsal for 10 months. توی توی این ده ماه روی نه روی فیلم نامه کار نمی کردیم بیشتر روی بک استوری کاراکتر را کار کردیم. In these 10 months we were not working on the script we were usually working most of the time we were working on the back story of the characters. بخشی از بازیگرای این فیلم کسایی هستن که اولین بار جوری دور میمیرن بیشترشون اینجوری هن. Most of the actors in the film are the actors that it, this is their first time that they're in front of camera. چند تایشون اصلا دو سه تایشون اصلا که حرفه ای هن. And there are two or three of them that are uh, professional actors. بعد یه جوری اون با اون ابشای حرفه ای تو این تمرینا شبیه اون غیر حرفه ای ها میشدند. And then the professional actors there should a moment come that professional actors become like the unprofessional actors or non-actors. چون دلم خواست به نظر نیاد که اینا رو قبلا دیدیم و میشناسیمشون. Because I didn't want them to look that we have seen these actors. We know them from before. برای من لذت بخش ترین بخش کار کار با بازیگرا و همون تمرین هاست. My most enjoy the most enjoyable part of my job for me is working with actors. اون تمرین بیشتر از اینکه به بازیگرها کمک کنه به من به عنوان کارگردان کمک کنه که فیلمو چجوری بسازم. The re- those rehearsals more than it helps the actors it helps me as a filmmaker and gives me the key to how I make this movie. Um, one of the things, I mean, the, the one thing that I adore about this film is that you, you bring this poetry and ambiguity to everyday life. Um, when I first saw the film, when it ended, people in, in getting out were saying, what happened to this? What happened to that? And they wanted absolute answers. And I angrily, like sometimes you know I get, I was like, no, just work it on your own. The, you know, you're, there, it, the movie is supposed to stay with you and for you to you know, think about it, correct? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely correct. همه همه تلاش هم این بوده و امیدوارم بعد از این هم ادامه پیدا کنه که اینجوری باشه this is the whole the whole try that and i want to continue it hopefully continue it like this وقتی فیلم رو همه چیش رو جواب میدی به تماشاگر اون میره خونش و شب میخوره و فردا صبح همه چی فراموش میکنه when you give the answer to the audience the audience go home and sleeps and tomorrow morning he forgets about everything <laughs> اون چیزی که باعث میشه باز همه عمر بهش فکر کنن اینه که یه چیزایی رو با خودش مثل سوالا میبرن خونه the thing that makes them just keep thinking maybe for the rest of their lives is they take these questions to home میدونی که بشر به این دلیل به اینجا رسیده و پیشرفت کرده که یه چیزی وجود داره به نام سوال you know the reason that humans have advanced this much because they have something that they call it question a question و اگر هر فیلم بتونه یه سری سوال مطرح کنه برای تماشاگر و تماشاگر بره به اون سوال ها جوابش خودش فکر کنه به نظر من فیلم فیلم موندگاری میشه and if the uh, movie gives the, those, those questions to the audience i think that's a successful film and the actor uh, the audience can take those questions and start asking those questions from themselves بعضیا به من میگن که خب ممکنه تماشاگر بره به یه چیزی فکر کنه به یه جوابی برسه که با اون جوابی که تو فکر می‌کنی متفاوت باشه من میگم اصلا مهم نیست sometimes they tell me that maybe the audience go home and they come up with an answer and it's not the answer you want them to come up to and i say it's not important حتی اگر اون به هیچ جوابی هم نرسه ولی مدام فکر کنه باز به نظرم اوکیه And if they don't even come up with any answer, but they just keep thinking about it, I think that's good enough. The fact that he thinks that's valuable. It's not important what's the conclusion or what he comes up with. The answer is not important. ما یه فیلم رو وقتی می‌بینیم در هنگامی که فیلم رو می‌بینیم با احساساتمون با فیلم روبرو می‌شیم. When we watch a movie, we watch a movie with our emotions. وقتی فیلم تمام میشه این احساسات ما رو آماده میکنه برای فکر کردن. When the movie is over, those emotions makes us ready to think. قرار نیست این فکر کردن حتما به این چیز خاص برسه. It doesn't matter if it's, it's not supposed that that thinking gets to a real answer or concrete answer. خود این فکر کردن از ما آدمای بهتری میسازه. The, the act of thinking makes us a better people.
این چیزیه که ارسطو بهش میگه کاتارسیس and that's what ارسطو استاتالیس no the greek uh, philosopher i forgot his Arastu name in english ارسطو greece uh, aristotle Arastaro. Arastaro. thank you thank you so much aristotle said what catharsism catharsism you're brilliant thank you so much for being here ashgar farhadi ashgar farhadi everybody thank you, thank you.